Hi boys and girls, it's day 14. This is actually gonna be day 14 and 15 of our virtual first grade. So this week has been short because we really weren't supposed to be in school on Monday. So that's why we only really had school Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday this week. Okay, so our sound that we've been looking at this week in all of our words is the oi, the oi sound. And it comes sometimes in the middle and it's spelled O-I and sometimes at the end and it's O-Y when you see it that way, okay? So let's just think about for a minute and let me move my book down here and get my Expo marker in my hand. Words that have this oil sound. Could we start with S? That's soil. Or we could change it to F and it's foil. Or we could change it to B and it's boil. Or we could put a B R here and it would be broil or we could put S P and spell spoil. Okay? So that's when O I I mean O I is saying oi and it's in the middle of the word. It has letters on either side. When oi is at the end of the word, it's spelled O-Y. Okay, so we could have toy or boy Some of you might drink milk that's made of soy. Or there's a boy, his name, Roy. Okay, so that's just some of the words that have the oi. All right, so we're going to put that away for now. And we're not going to do dictation today because we have a test. And so we'll just do the dictation on the spelling test in a minute. So we're going to go straight to the Super Kid workbook today. And we're going to be on page 92. All right, so on page 92, the workbook page that we're working on, um, all of this has to do with the story that we've read in the Super Kid reader called For the Birds. Okay? So... This page has pictures and sentences about events from the story for the birds. Each numbered event on the left is connected to an event on the right. Look at the picture of Tock and Alf waiting in line and let's read the sentence. So underneath there it says Tock and Alf waited in line. All right, so what happened next? They want to know what happened next after that. So after that, there's a line to the gardener gave Tock and Alf plot number four. All right, so we're going to be thinking about what happened first and then what happened next in the story. That's what we're doing. Okay, so look at number two. The picture shows four of the super kids and the sentence says the super kids forgot to buy seeds for talk and alf so then what happened look at the page and look at the other side so would it be that talk and alf got bird seed the bird seed plants got bigger and blossomed or the super kids made fun of talk and alf so i think it should be the top one so right after they forgot to buy them then they went and got their own free bird seed right that was going to be their seeds all right number three the sentence says alf and talk said they planted bird seed so we have two choices left so what do you think happened next 
I think it is that the super kids made fun of them, right? They said they, they planted bird seed and they started making fun. And then number four, Tok and Alf kept the soil moist. And because they did that, then the bird seed plants got bigger and blossomed. Okay, so that's what happens before and next. All right, so now you can look at your next page in the Super Kid book, and this is something you can do um, later on your own, but it's a little book. It says how to plant carrots. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut out Carefully cut out on the blue dotted line with your scissors, or if you don't have kid scissors, you can get your mom or dad or somebody to cut it out for you. On the blue dotted line, you're going to cut it, okay? All right, and then it says that you make sure to cut through only one page. The second direction is to cut the page in half along the blue dotted line. Then fold each piece in half along the yellow lines. One folded piece should have the book's title and the big picture of Tok and Alf on top. The other piece should have the number two and the picture of the garden plot on top. Then the fourth step is to pick up the folded piece with the picture of the garden plot and put it inside the other folded piece with a picture of Tok and Alf. And so when you are finished, you're gonna have a little book that says how to plant carrots, okay? All right, so your job in this also is that you're going to have to fill in some things, there's handwriting lines, okay? So this book is an informational book that explains how to do something. Okay. Another um, way to say that is a guide. So sometimes when you have a, a book that gives directions, you call it a guide. All right, on the first page, it says, um, it gives the first step in planting carrots to go buy seed packets. Okay, so um, let's see what they want us to do. Oh, so on the handwriting line, you're supposed to write the um, memory words that we talked about. That's what it wants you to do. The handwriting line is for looking at the sentence and finding the memory word. Okay, so the first one, go buy seed packets, the memory word is buy, okay? And if you want to remember about what those words are, you can look back in your Super Kid workbook. Let's see, that was on page, it's kind of back on what we did on Tuesday. So, let's see, on lesson, okay, yeah, it's on page 90. If you want to go back in your book to page 90, you'll see the, um, the memory words, and that's what goes on the blank. When you read the sentence, you find the memory words. And just to remind you, too, about that, I have my little cards that I showed you the other day. Kind is one, like be kind to others. It's another word for nice. Buy, B-U-Y, this means to buy something at the store. And I told you that there's another way to say that and spell that, and that is buy, B-Y. That means like I'm sitting by you. All right, and then there's find and right r i g h t and this right means this is my right hand i raise it up high remember or you are correct so you are right and the other way to write that word is this word right w r i t e means to write like with a pencil okay and then we had wash. Like wash your hands, which is what we're supposed to be doing right now. And 
light. Okay, something could be light, like light in color, or else not weigh very much, so it's light. So those are your memory words that you're going to be finding in those sentences. Okay, so one more thing that we're going to talk about real quick before we start the spelling test is that if we were in school today, we'd be learning a, something about poems called a sinquane. Can you say that word? Sinquane. A sinquane is a kind of poem, and it's an easy kind of poem to write because it has really good directions. So this sinquane is, is about bubbles. That's the one that they wrote. So you can see the title is Bubbles. The second line of a sinquane has two words, and the two words are both adjectives. You remember we're talking about adjectives? They are describing words. So the two words they chose are clear and round. And that little mark right there is a comma. Put commas between words. The third row or line of a sinquane has three words. And the three words are all verbs this time. Verbs are action words, so it's floating, drifting, popping. The fourth line of the sinquane has, can you guess, four words, but this time it is a sentence that tells why you might like what you're talking about. So you, the subject was bubbles, you say, I love blowing them. And then the last line is the same thing from the first line, just the title or what you're talking about again, so it was bubbles. Okay, so this kind of poem is called a what again? A sinquane. Okay, it has one, two, three, four, five lines, and sinquane, that means five. Okay, so what you could do, if you wanted to, for fun, is that you could think of something that you like. Dog, cat, pool, it has to be a noun. You have to think of a noun, and you could write your own sinquane. If you do, write it down and take a picture, get your parents to take a picture and send it to me. Let's see if anybody comes up with a good sinquane. All right, so spelling test time. So get out your your paper and your pencil. And we'll start with spelling first. So write number one at the top of your page. And our first word is oil. Oil. This salad dressing has oil and vinegar. Oil. Number two, boil. Boil the egg for 10 minutes. Boil. Number three, soil. Plant the flowers in the soil. Soil. Number four, coin. This coin is worth 25 cents. Coin. Number five, join. Which club would you like to join? Join. Number six, point. Point to your home state on the map. Point. Number seven, joint. The place where two bones meet is called a joint. Joint. Number eight, joy. The music filled us with joy. Joy. Number nine, toy. My stuffed bunny is my favorite toy. Toy. And number
number 10, boy. That boy is six years old. Boy. All right, and the bonus word this week was flower. Flower. A marigold is a kind of flower. Flower. Okay, so you're either going to turn your paper over or get a new piece of paper for dictation. All right, so I want you to remember, just like always, that when you're doing sentences for dictation, that they always begin with a capital letter and they end with some kind of punctuation mark. If it's a telling sentence, it's a period, or if it's a question, it's a question mark. Okay, so think about that. Okay, number one sentence. We had to hurry. We had to hurry. We had to hurry. We had to hurry. Okay, number two. The storm was coming. The storm was coming. The storm was coming. All right, number three. This is a long one, okay? So, Tok and Alf will plant seeds in the soil. Tok and Alf will plant seeds in the soil. And we'll give you a minute for that one. So you might break it into little pieces. So it's Tok and Alf. And then we'll plant seeds. in the soil. And remember that Tok and Alf are both people's names. They begin with a capital letter. Tok and Alf will plant seeds in the soil. All right, number four. They will enjoy the garden club. They will enjoy the garden club. And if you remember when we practiced this, that the letter G in garden and the C in club are capitalized. They will enjoy the garden club. All right, and we're going to do a number five sentence today. Number five is, what kind of seeds are they? What kind of seeds are they? Think about that one. I think it's asking something. What kind of seeds are they? So, when you are finished with your spelling test, then you can get your mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, whoever is helping you today, take a picture, 
and text it to me and then I can see and I can grade it and send it back to you and I hope everybody made a 105 and a 100. All right, last thing for today is we're going to read a book and this book is called The Good Egg. And since we just had Easter, it's a good time to read about eggs, right? But the good egg, being a good egg is also something we've talked about idioms before. If somebody's a good egg, it means that they're good. They're a good kid, right? So this is literally about a good egg. Oh, hello. I was just rescuing this cat. Know why? Because I'm a good egg. A very good egg. It's true, I do all kinds of good things like I'll carry your groceries, I'll water your plants, I'll change your tires, I'll paint your house. If you need any help whatsoever, I'm your egg. I've always been a good egg. It's been this way from the start. Even in my earliest days, back at the store, there were a dozen of us living together under one recycled roof. There was Meg and Peg and Greg and Clegg and Shell and Shelly and Sheldon and Shelby and Egbert and Frank and other Frank. The other 11 eggs weren't on their best behavior. They weren't exactly good. They ignored their bedtime. They only ate sugary cereal. They threw tantrums. They cried for no reason. And they broke their stuff on purpose. Meanwhile, I tried to take charge. I tried to fix their bad behavior. I tried to keep the peace because I was a good egg. A very good egg. Nobody seemed to care though. Every night I was exhausted. My head felt scrambled. And then one fateful morning I noticed some cracks in my shell. They were everywhere. My doctor said it was from all the pressure I was putting on myself. The pressure of making sure everybody was as good as me. I was cracking up, literally. Something had to change. I've had enough. I told Meg and Peg and Greg and Clegg and Shell and Shelly and Sheldon and Shelby and Egbert and Frank and other Frank that I was leaving. I can't be the only good egg in a bad carton, I said. Blah, 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 they replied. I left that night. I wandered from town to town. The hours became days, the days became weeks. I lost track of time. I was alone out there on the road under the stars. I really tried to focus on myself and what I needed. I took walks, I read books, I floated in the river, I wrote in my journal. I found simple moments to be quiet. I breathed in, I breathed out. I even started painting. For once, I found time for me. And guess what? Little by little, the cracks in my shell started to heal, and my head no longer felt scrambled. I started to feel like myself again. So I've made a big decision. I'm returning to my old carton and my friends because I'm kind of lonely out here. This time I know what I need to do. I'll try not to worry so much. I'll be good to my fellow eggs while also being good to myself. Here we go. Everybody missed me and I missed them too. Hello, Meg. Howdy, Peg. Hey, Greg. Greetings, Clegg. What's up, Shell? Aloha, Shelly. Hey, yo, Sheldon. Hi, Shelby. Good day, Egbert. What's happening, Frank? Howdy do, other Frank. 
sure every once in a while somebody's still a little bit bad, but it's not like before. Here's what I realized. The other eggs aren't perfect, and I don't have to be either. I'm okay with that. Yep, the old carton is back together again. We're a solid dozen. It's good to be home. And that's the end. And that is a good lesson for everybody, kids and grown-ups, that you have to take care of yourself. You can't just be the good egg all the time, right? All right, boys and girls, that is all of our school for today. So I hope you have a great weekend, and I'll see you back here on Monday. Bye.